Hey guys, i um, glad you could join us again. I hope you liked our little skit. Um, we had a lot of fun shooting that, um, but uh, we'll, we'll touch into that a little bit as, as we go on with our lesson this, this week. Uh, so I hope everyone's uh, you know, just having a good time in quarantine as much as they can. Um, it looks like some things are beginning to be lifted, um, and I hope we can get back together soon. Um, but today, we're gonna be finishing up our Translate series that we've been going through. So the final word, that we're going to be going through is the term resurrection. Now this is a term that probably most of you know. Um, so resurrection, it means the bringing back to life from the dead, either by themselves or by another individual. Um, so usually when you think of resurrection, you think of Jesus, right? Jesus raised from the dead three days after. Um, we're going to begin reading in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 um, and seeing what it says about the resurrection. Now, uh, beginning in 15, we see the, uh, the resurrection of Christ. It's, it's depicting that. And then we're going to be starting in verse 12. It says, Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and our faith is in vain. We are even found to be mis misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he, did, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised... Your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope, in this life only we are of all people most to be pitied. Um, what he's saying there, what we, we see Paul, he's writing to the church in Corinth. Um, he's basically saying that the term resurrection, it has a more gravity to it than sometimes we, we take for granted. Um, he's saying here that everything about our faith, and especially a New Testament faith, he's saying everything is built upon this resurrection of Jesus, is, is built upon that Jesus did raise from the dead. Um, he says our faith is futile if we do not, if, if just this fundamental principle, if, if this thing, this fact, that happened in history, if it did not happen or if we do not believe that it happened, there's no point in our faith. There's, there's, there's no point to Christianity. Everything else is a hoax. The Old Testament prophesied about the Messiah coming. Everything we know about Christianity leads up and points to this one point of, of Jesus and who he is and what he did. And if we disregard any point of that, Paul is writing and he is saying, your faith doesn't even matter. 
who you are doesn't matter. This life doesn't matter. Churches, pastors, he says preaching is in vain. Everything we know about the fundamental principles of Christianity, none of it matters if, if we simply choose to neglect the fact that Jesus did raise from the dead. If, if we choose not to believe that, and there are a lot of people in this world that don't believe that, both some people that are in different ways of, of thinking but still say they believe in our God, and even people who are agnostic or maybe atheistic that don't believe in any higher power, that they, do, they don't believe that Jesus raised from the dead. Um, but this fundamental thing, Paul is writing and says, you have to understand this principle. Um, but why, what is, is significant more so about the resurrection? It is the thing, it is Jesus, it is, is God doing the impossible because what we are human. We, there are limits to what a human body can do, to what we are capable of doing, right? But it says we can do all things through Christ. Now that's through his will, but God can do anything. He can do miracles. He can do amazing things. And so this miracle of him raising from the dead, just even the miracle of him being, him sending his son to be born of a virgin, all of that is a miracle, and that is as what God has done for us. But it stands out in, in the human realm aspect because it's the thing, death is like the one thing that people fear. Like, I, I was looking online and I was trying to find out what are the things that people fear the most. And I thought it was quite interesting. Um, you know, public speaking is the number one thing that Americans fear. And I get that. Um, you know, for me, for a long time, I hated getting in front of crowds. And, you know, it was just something I had to work at. I'm not going to say I'm an amazing speaker. I, you know, I... But I'm just saying that it does come with practice, and I'm definitely more comfortable standing in front of people than I used to 10 years ago. Um, I remember I took a public speaking class in college. Oh, Lord, man, I was a nervous wreck any time I had to give a presentation. Um, but and I'm sure many of y'all are the same way, standing in front of crowds, and whether it's a play or a performance, or even it could be even sports, and that's something that, that's fearful. But as I went down the list, I thought it was really interesting, the things that, that people fear. Um, behind public speaking, there was heights. Um, you know, I mean, fear of falling or something like that, yeah. Um, animals. Now, this, this kind of kept in the category of spiders, snakes, maybe a, a big creature that you're fearful of. You know, if, if a tiger was staring me in the face, yeah, that might make me a little worried or hesitant. Um, and then it continued and it was drowning. Um, and then there was blood and needles. They kind of clumped those together. So it's either like seeing blood or drawing blood or needles or um, being at a doctor's office, claustrophobia. Um, I will say I do not like a confined space. Um, flying, strangers, and then um, the last three I thought were kind of funny. Um, it says zombies is the next sphere. Um, and then we have darkness, and then we have clowns. Um, <laughs> I, I get those can, those can be kind of uh, scary to, to people, and um, darkness is obviously kind of the fear of the unknown. But as I was looking at these different fears, I was noticing that the number one thing that they all have in common is that we fear that they can lead to some form of death or some form form of them harming us, right? Okay. Um, like public speaking, for example, okay. You don't necessarily think that you're probably going to die if standing in front of people, but you have a fear and you think you may embarrass yourself. And then you may think you almost like you feel like you're going to do something that'll make you want to. And that's simply not the case. Um, heights, for example, you're, you're not scared. If you look at a mountain, or a skyscraper, and you just look at it, no, that's not a scary thing. The scary thing is falling off of that. Um, and animals, it's of them possibly hurting you, blood, maybe loss of blood, being injured, claustrophobia, being stuck in a place and not being able to get out. That, that's the fear. It's not being shoved in it. It's the fear of not being able to get out, and that's going to be the last thing you see. Flying, falling out of it, strangers not knowing what they'll do, zombies. Zombies are trying to eat your brains. Um, 
you know, all, all these things. But kind of the, the thing that kind of sums them all together is this fear of, of possible death, right? We, we see all throughout history that, that death is something that has been associated with, with fear or something that, that is to be feared of, of what may come after. Um, we see even in ancient Greek history, um, we, we kind of talked about, um, not last week because of Mother's Day, but the week prior, we talked about Hercules and what he had to do to train to be this hero, right? Well, in Hercules, in, in Greek mythology, what is there? There's the underworld, right? They feared death, and they, they wanted to be some kind of hero or something, but they may not know where they would go when they would die, depending on how they lived their life and what they did. And so they feared going to the underworld to be with Hades, and it was this, this tormenting place. And, um, you know, it, it was something that, that we see all throughout history, that death has been something that has been fearful. And all, most fears in life, they are fear, we are fearful of certain things because we think that they could lead to death, to, to this thing that, that we don't even, like, we may be so far off, but death could be around the corner. We don't know what every day has for us. But, you know, what, what does Jesus say? How, how should we live out our lives? What, what has he done for us? See, the, the image of the resurrection is what? Is that he has conquered death. See, that is what, what is the impossible thing, is that Jesus rose from the dead. He conquered the fear among all fears that everyone was fearing, and he conquered it, and he said, death is no more. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? So he is giving us this thing. He, he beat death, and that is who we are serving. And he says what? He says this in Romans eight thirty seven. As we say, it says, um, well, as we go a little bit uh, earlier than that, and starting in uh, Romans eight thirty three, it says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Okay, so God's chosen, those who are saved, those who uh, seek after him. And it says, it is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate... Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, and this is verse 37. It says, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Okay, so Jesus is the conqueror of all things. He conquered death. He, God, if, if God is for us, who can be against us, right? So if he has conquered death, if he, if through the resurrection, that is what he's done. But it says we are more than conquerors through Jesus who loves us, okay? If, if we seek out God, if, if we are saved, if we are following the life that Christ has for us, we are conquerors as well because why? Death has no more, sing, no more sting to us because one day we will be in eternity in heaven with him. See, death isn't something that we should fear anymore. It should be something, not saying looking forward to necessarily death, the instance of it, but seeing beyond it and saying, if I die, it's okay. Like, this life is temporary and I knew that going in and that's what Jesus said and for 6,000 years, that's what it's been. Life has been temporary. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. And we should not fear death because we should know that whenever our time is to come, that our God, he's already conquered death. And through him, we are conquerors ourselves. And through salvation, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and him changing our lives and us choosing to follow him, we are now able to conquer death and go on to eternity with him in, in fellowship in heaven, right? See, sometimes we can, we can live our lives in fear. Like we talked several weeks ago about, we, we looked at the fear series about everything going on in the world right now. You know, it's, it's a crazy world right now. And there's, there's so many things to fear and just in daily life of even just simple fears from, your, from peers. I, I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but you know, fearing that you're not good enough, 
fearing that you're not pretty enough, fearing that you don't measure up to things. You're not this ideal person in life. There, there's so many things that, that we're fearful of that we may not even realize is a fear in our own lives. See, there's a difference when you, when you know that, that you are a conqueror your whole perspective changes. When we, if we keep reading, uh, continuing in verse 38, it says, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God is telling us that we are conquerors through through him right and he says there's nothing there's nothing in this world to fear and nothing can separate you from him even death see Jesus came and he conquered death showing us that look this thing it is no more he took this this fearful thing turned it on its head and made death equal new life with if, if someone has said that you're a conqueror, that you are doing something great, or that you are living, you are a better version of yourself and you have done some good achievement, it's not to say that we should be prideful. We should always be humble. But there, there's a difference in how we should live our lives. We should be champions. See, we are champions because we have found God, because we, we seek out Him and we are, the life that He provides for us we, we are now champions because we have conquered the things of this world because we know that once this is all over, this, this temporary thing, we, ha- we have conquered this world and the, the challenges that, that have been before us and we've stuck true to God and that one day we will beat this world and we will go on to heaven and go on to eternity. You guys watched the skit earlier. What I mean, it was goofy, absolutely. and But at the same time, you know, to be a champion, kind of like when we talked about um, sanctification, it's, it's a training process. To, to be a champion, to be someone for God's glory, you, there, there's a training process with that. Now, we looked like we were training and we had no idea what we were doing, no, no idea how to train, and then we just started wailing on each other, right? Okay, that's not necessarily the instance of a champion, but with every fight, there will be a champion. Within our lives, this, this battle against the world that we have, there will be a champion. There will be someone to come out of it. See, Jesus, he came to this world and he conquered it better than we could ever do. He conquered every temptation, every trial, every, every tribulation, everything that was thrown at him. He even conquered at the point of death, the, the thing that, hit, that should have completely ended his life. He came back three days later and said, no more. I have conquered this. This nothing in this world, including death. Death is something that is in this world. God is eternal. Heaven is eternal. He says, literally, there is nothing in this world that can defeat me. And there is nothing in this world that will ever separate you because the thing that you think will separate you, that is death, he says, no, I will bring you into my kingdom. See, how comforting is that to know that that we are champions and that we have conquered all these things and there's literally nothing for us to fear. There, there, there's absolutely nothing because the one thing that surpasses all fears is, is death. That, that is like the number one key factor to any kind of fear. Like it, it's almost weird to think about if there was no death, like, like if you just lived forever here on earth, would you ever fear anything? You probably wouldn't. If you could jump off of a cliff and just go skydiving and just bounce like a bounce house at the bottom, you probably would do that. Like, there would be absolutely nothing stopping you. So now, we, we, this, the circumstance of death, because of the garden and because of our fall, that is why death exists. There's literally, God is saying, I have conquered this. There's no reason for you to fear the thing that you used to. When you come to God, he gives you new perspective, new life, new, new hope. And that is the thing, is, is Jesus came to be the, the hope and the light to the world to show us, look, I can do it. it. He showed us, he was the only person that could ever conquer this world. He came and he showed that to us. And he said, the only way to do that is to follow me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, resurrection 
it's so much more than we ever realize. The, the term resurrection, it's not just simply something that Jesus did. It is he set the precedent. He set the example. He saved our lives. He saved us from sin. The, the image of resurrection paired with the image of the cross is something that is so unbelievably amazing, so immaculate, something that we take for granted sometimes. And it is something that, that is the culmination of everything that we've been learning about and everything in this life. It, the whole Old Testament was leading up to a point, a prophesy, a prophecy of the Messiah, and then Jesus came, and now we are living now in, in a version of the New Testament. And Jesus said that, and if we realize the power of the resurrection, if we realize the power of what he did and the power that lives in us because of the resurrection power of Jesus, and if he is indwelling in us, there is literally nothing we, can, we can't do, and there's nothing that we should fear, and, and we should walk with champions and in victory, and we should know that in, in these battles in life that we will be the champion like Jesus was because if, if Jesus is on our side, there is literally nothing that can be against us if he is for us. Let us pray. Lord, we just come to you this day. Lord, I just pray that you instill all of us in all of us the heart of a champion, the heart of a warrior that we know that, that through the resurrection, through your word, through the cross, that, that you've given us, us power to be conquerors through all things, through you who have loved us, Lord, and that, that we can do all things through you and through your will and, and what, what you have, have planned for our lives, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that this puts a new perspective in all of our lives, that we remember the power of the resurrection, that it's not just a term. It's not just something that happened. It is something that, that is powerful and that, that its power transcends time because of what you did and what you've done for us. And Lord, I, I just hope that we just never forget that, never forget what you have done, what you have given us, what you have blessed us with. And Lord, that we will no longer fear that there is nothing to fear, whether it's COVID, whether it's death. Lord, nothing has any sting anymore because because of you and what, what you have done, Lord. And but we just can't thank you enough for that. We just pray this in your holy name, pray and ask it. Amen. Well, thank you guys again for coming out. And hopefully within the next few weeks, we'll get back to normal real soon. And it looks like things are turning up. Um, so, and until then, see you all next week.